welcome Gainesville community. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, say, say hey and um, get ready for the start of our upcoming school year. I've got most of the administrative team here with me, uh, starting with uh, Mrs. Pomfret, School Counseling Director, uh, the Assistant Principals, Adam Daniels, Drew Barton, Amy Manival, Isabella Yearwood, Troy Washington, and uh, Dr. Robert Scott is our specialty program coordinator, our pathways program coordinator. So between us, we're going to get through a, a lot of information in a relatively short period of time. The reason we've recorded this webinar is so you can pause and go back, access the information at, at your leisure um, when it works for you. Um, but without any further ado, we're going to share a slide uh, deck with you and we'll, we'll progress through the information we think maybe is useful for you as we get ready for the start of the school year. So welcome back. We're excited to uh, welcome our students back. We'll have a student orientation next week. And obviously, uh, first day of school is uh, August 21st. And we're really looking forward to our students returning. So from here, Um, the agenda is a little bit about what to expect for the 23-24 school year, some changes, some of the same things. Uh, and then there's a, a long section about student supports through our uh, school, school counseling office um, that'll describe things, uh, information regarding schedules and other details about uh, look for us as we go through the school year. To move on from there, one of the things I want to start with is opportunities for partnership. One of our goals is for our families to feel like they can partner with us at Gainesville High School to be involved in the education of, uh, of our students, um, but also be part of the school community. The QR code here allows uh, for parents, family members to fill out a form expressing interest to help with volunteerism for various organizations we have in the school. One of the benefits of partnering in these ways is you get a lot of access to the school, you get to meet people, um, hopefully get to understand a little bit more about how the school operates and where to find resources, et cetera, uh, while giving back to the community that, in a way that supports our students. So parents, if you're interested in volunteering and partnering, um, that's one way of doing it. Just scan the QR code and let us know. As we look back to the 23 school year, um, I'm proud of the work that we did as a school. I'm proud of the work our students uh, under, undertook and the accomplishments they, uh, they made. Um, we've had a strong student performance uh, cycle on SOLs and uh, advanced placement coursework. Out of the 21 AP courses that we offered last year, uh, sorry, of the, of the 21 courses we offered last year, 15 of our advanced placement uh, groups of students scored at or above the, the world mean. Um, our graduation rate was uh, right around 96%, so very strong for our first year of graduating seniors. Um, so positive year of performance there. Our performing arts group um, is a blue ribbon uh, re recipient. So each of our upper ensembles received um, superior ratings during their assessment. And we've had a lot of students go on to college in the workforce um, very successfully. We've, we have students next year attending Yale, UVA, William & Mary, Virginia Tech, the Coast Guard Academy. Uh, we've had students receive um, large ROTC scholarships and over, over $5 million of scholarships in total for our uh, graduating class, our inaugural graduating class from the 23 school year. Lots of athletic wins. Um, our girls made uh, girls basketball team obviously made states, uh, multiple state participants in track and field, and uh, a lot of progress among our athletic programs in general, both in, in terms of participation and obviously performance. Uh, and, and several new clubs last year up and running. We're, we've already had some applications for new clubs this year. So things are building, uh, both in terms of participation and performance, and we're excited to see where that goes as we look forwards. Looking forward to, to this coming school year, one of the, the biggest changes that our students will experience is a slightly modified bell schedule. We've repackaged some of the instructional minutes to carve out what we've described as a nest period. So every other day we'll rotate through um, um, the seven periods um, so that each of our classes on an eight-day cycle will get an extra 45 minutes of instruction for reteaching, reassessing, 
extension activities. The goal of that is to diminish some of the need for students to stick around after school for extra support or reassessment opportunities. So we're optimistic that NEST is really going to provide a strong support for our students. Um, every other, about once every eight days, we'll also have an advisory period where our students will uh, connect with the same homeroom teacher, if we think of it as a, a homeroom, and go through lessons that um, faculty and staff and student leaders are developing through the year to deal with um, our school culture, characteristics, um, executive functioning, um, teamwork, planning for graduation, those kinds of things. So the advisory period will house the things that maybe we don't always get to do in a, a traditional uh, content area classroom. Uh, we're growing by uh, 400, uh, sorry, we're growing in total population by about 400 students. Uh, our senior class is doubling to about 450 students. We're starting to see our enrollment stabilize. So we'll grow for one more year, about 150 students uh, during the 24, five school year. And then we can expect to see our, our enrollment level off right around capacity or just under capacity. So right now, it doesn't look like we're going to need trailers in the near future. Things can change, but it's good that our enrollment's starting to, uh, to plateau. Uh, our, our AP enrollment, however, is, has doubled over last year. We're, we're going to administer over 2,100 advanced placement tests, uh, 25 courses, and significant uptick in uh, advanced coursework participation at Gainesville, which is great to see. Um, dual enrollment courses are being discussed. We don't have them offered specifically for this school year, uh, but we're doing the early planning this fall so that we can offer a little bit of dual enrollment coursework for the 24-25 school year, uh, obviously a year from now. And our athletic programs are up and running. Our fall season's well underway. Our golf team won a tournament um, yesterday, and uh, we have JV and varsity programs across all sports and uh, freshman programs in many as well. So that's what we've got to look forward to this school year. Um, to share some of the continuous improvement efforts that um, are driven by the Prince William County School Strategic Plan, um, Dr. McDade has specified four commitments uh, in her strategic plan that the school board has, uh, has adopted. And uh, they start with learning and achievement for all, positive climate and culture, family and community engagement and organizational coherence. So we as a school will then take these commitments and develop our continuous improvement plan. And for the sake of transparency, so that our community knows the things that we're working on and the things that we're, we're, we're using to drive our decision-making as priorities, um, we'll share some of our goals for the, for the coming school year. Um, we want to increase our reading performance among English learning students and students with disabilities. Uh, the target being 85% overall. Although we've exceeded that score, that pass rate among our total population, there are some gaps in student performance that we hope to address and, and support our students to, to stronger levels of performance in reading. So that's one of our goals. Same applies in biology, same applies in algebra one. So there are academic areas of focus for the coming school year. From a, a climate and culture perspective, um, we have a high absentee rate. Our chronic absentee rate for the year was almost 19%. Uh, the good news is that that was the lowest among Prince William County high schools, but the, uh, the Virginia Department of Education specifies that uh, to be considered in good standing, that, that rate should be below 15%. So we're hoping to drop or reduce our chronic absentee rate by a couple of percentage points this year. Uh, below 17%, and then two years from now, dip below 15%. So we'll be stressing the importance of good attendance across our community as we move through the year. And then finally, from a community engagement perspective, uh, we're hoping that our parents will uh, report increased satisfaction with um, the, the, the instructional programs that we have at Gainesville High School by 1% annually, up to 82%. Uh, why 1% annually? If, if we grow by 1% year upon year, um, we would have the highest uh, satisfaction rating among parents, parent groups at the high school level. And the same for students' um, interpretation of our academic programs. If our student satisfaction rate increases by 2% annually, uh, then again, our students would be reporting the highest levels of satisfaction from across the division. So there are goals for this year and, and next. 
some of the things that we're going to do to uh, support our pathway to achieving those goals. Um, our teachers are going to look at ensuring the, the tasks, the classroom assignments they use are truly aligned with the standards and that students are doing the work that is necessary to, to show proficiency against the standards. We're going to use literacy um, strategies to um, give students reading, writing, and academic discourse opportunities throughout the curriculum. So um, students in every class should get uh, lots of practice in reading, writing, and uh, explaining their ideas as they go through the day. We're looking to increase how we use co-teaching teams, uh, where we have special education teachers and, and content teachers in the same classroom, or English learner teachers and content teachers in the same classroom. We're going to be more intentional about how those teams of teachers operate, plan, and then obviously teach. We're looking to build um, even stronger partnerships with our parents um, so that we communicate with greater frequency, um, students' attendance uh, status or standing. And then we're going to look to, to provide some mentorship for students within the school. And then finally, we're looking to um, improve the clarity with which we provide performance um, ratings for students in class. So we've worked to simplify the language that we use to report grades. Um, five point proficiency rating will be used in a lot of classrooms using rubrics to give students descriptive feedback and uh, our teachers will know that the expectations that grade books reflect this and are updated weekly during the school year. So we're really working to clarify the language we use and some of the mechanisms we use to assign grades and report grades in our grade books um, for everybody's benefit. With that in mind, um, looking back again, uh, a few things that I'm, I'm pleased to be able to report is the percentage of students who earned A, B plus or B grades at Gainesville High School was relatively high compared to other high schools in the division. 82% um, of the comparisons we did across the curriculum showed that Gainesville High School had the highest, the second or the third highest percentage of uh, students earning A's, B pluses or B's. 40% um, of the time when we compared our students' performance against other high schools, uh, Gainesville was the highest performing school in terms of uh, students who'd earned A's, B pluses, or B grades in math, science, language arts, and social studies. What we also found was there was a really high correlation of students who earned a C plus or better. Any student who earned a C plus or better in an SOL course um, had strong likelihood of passing um, an SOL test. 91% of our students who got a C plus or higher went on to pass the associated SOL in that class. And as I shared earlier, a very high percentage of our students in advanced placement courses um, scored at three or higher, um, outperforming the, the world average in 15 out of the 21 courses that we offered last year. We also had 113 advanced, advanced placement scholars or AP scholars. So although we're not formally designated an AP scholar school, students here can become AP scholars. And uh, from a relatively small senior class, we only had 250 students in our senior class um, to have 113 AP scholars and 10 capstone uh, diploma recipients is a really strong rate of return. So I'm proud of our students and the work our teachers have done academically in the last 12 months. Okay, here's the schedule that I described earlier um, to, to um, unpack this just a little bit. Um, we'll have opposing days, odd and even days. On our odd days, students will meet for periods one, two, four, and six. Each of those classes will be about 85 minutes. So we've shortened those blocks just a little bit to um, um, uh, repackage the minutes and deploy them into the nest period. Um, on our even days, we'll meet for period two. And then we'll go into our nest or advisory period. Then we'll meet for period four and period six. So again, nest is revisiting each of the class periods um, about once every eight days for reassessment, relearning, and extension activities and advisories, the other stuff that we think students will benefit from learning and participating in during the year. As was the case last year, we're really going to focus early in the year on diminishing um, dis cell phone distractions during the school day. Um, in our classroom, cell phones present a huge challenge. Um, our students, generally speaking, um, 
uh, benefit from cell phones being out of sight and out of mind so that they can focus on the, the learning at hand. Our teachers will prescribe if and when it's appropriate to use cell phones. Cell phones can be used in the hallways uh, between classes before and after school and during lunch. Um, so if a teacher has to remind a student to put a cell phone away more than once, uh, then they run the risk of the cell phone being confiscated for the duration of the class um, and then return to the student at the end of the class. But parents were asking that you reinforce um, the importance for students to, to have good cell phone etiquette for, for their own benefit, for to diminish what I would describe as uh, drama during the school day, but also obviously distraction during our lessons. When we get to attendance, I've talked about the chronic absentee rate. Um, this has been one of the strong uh, negative features of working public education post-pandemic. Um, we really need our students to show up every day and, and come to school. The, the departments of education um, show a strong correlation between a good attendance and good student performance. Poor attendance is one of the indicators that leads to a high dropout rate and uh, poor academic performance um, towards graduation. So uh, parents, anything you can do to safely ensure that um, your children, our students are in school every day, we appreciate. Mr. Daniels is going to talk a little bit more about the attendance um, uh, norms and, and pr pr procedures that we have in our school. So as Mr. Beach uh, said, the attendance stuff we have all on our website. Um, if you notice on the image that you have there on the ribbon across the top, it does say attendance on it. If you click on that, all your attendance questions can be answered. Uh, for excused absences from all day, uh, we asked parents to continue to use Parent View, which was similar to what we did last year. Um, for early dismissals, use the link that is there. Um, and under the attendance tab, and you'll fill out a form that will uh, then be verified by our uh, uh, administrative assistants here in the building. Uh, and then for late arrivals, we encourage you to bring in a, um, a, a note uh, when you come in. Um, the note can be dropped off at the front desk when they come in. All students are going to need to check in at the front desk. Uh, when they come in uh, with late arrivals, and it's a great opportunity just to drop off your note. That way it can be verified. Attendance can be updated. Uh, remember, you do have five days from uh, an, ex an unexcused absence to make an excused absence. Um, so please make sure uh, you're diligent in returning in your uh, notes uh, as we go. And now I'm turning it over to Ms. Yearwood to talk about supplies and laptops. All right, so the supply needs aren't very big, but you know we do expect some of the basics, paper, a plastic binder, a composition notebook, a pencil or a pen. M math classes will have Desmos and have some calculators available. And then there may be some courses that have additional needs such as an art class, um, and that will be shared by the teacher. Laptops and devices will be distributed on the first day of school to your students. And if your student chooses to use their own device, they are free to do so. However, they won't receive the same tech support um, that students with our school devices will receive. So just keep that in mind. Um, lockers will also be provided, and that'll be in the first week or so of school. Um, not a lot of students use these, but they are available, and as well as in the PE. Um, and for PE, students should bring athletic clothing to be ready to dress out. There's not a specific uniform. Um, and then a combination lock for those PE lockers will be useful. Um, as this is similar to last year, but the federal waiver is did expire that made all the lunches free. Um, so lunches, the, the pay scale is right there on the screen in front of you. Um, and then families who are eligible for free and reduced lunch should apply. The application is up, as you can see kind of on that screen. Um, and you can use the My School box to be able to reload, automatically reload your balance and that really makes it a lot easier to be able to keep track of that um, and always if you want to go to the PWCS nutrition page and that's linked from the GHS site you can go there and see all this information as well all right so bear with me this is a lot this may be a place where you want to pause the video um, but if you look at the image to the right it'll kind of show a lot about our transportation um, if you're dropping off your child but we'll start with buses um, so the routes should be published um, August 16th, and so you'll see that student view and parent view, um, and, and you should be able to see that then. At dismissal, we'll have them in the signs in the bus loop, and we'll share that with students, and they'll be available out there. So their bus will be, always be in lane one, or their bus will always be in lane two. 
Currently, we do not have plans for activity buses, um, but we will reevaluate as needed throughout the school year. Um, our security team has been awesome in selling parking permits, and we've already started. So thank you to those of you that have. Um, and they'll continue to do so. There'll be more information posted on the website um, on when they'll be available and the things that you need to have ready to get your permit. And then again, going back to that picture, um, there are a lot of new changes this year, um, and some of that will be talked about later. But if you look at the picture, the new traffic pattern for the 23-24 school year is that you'll enter at the same entrance at the very end of university, um, but you'll follow that all the way down towards the um, the field, come back up, and then you would drop off at doors 30, 33 um, for your children to come in. So it will be a different place to drop off students in the morning. Um, so please always remember safety is number one. So pay attention to that while you're dropping off your child. And speaking of security, we have an awesome security staff. We have one SSO, one SRO, and three security assistants, and all of them have worked um, either in the juvenile justice system or um, in policing. And so they have great experience. They're great with our students. And we're very, very lucky to have them. Um, just a few reminders, we need to have all doors locked throughout the day for the safety of everyone. And so that's a reminder to DoorDash, Uber Eats. You can't have that delivered here. We don't want people coming in trying to deliver food. It's not safe. Um, you are welcome to bring food in for your child, but please do not send it through any of the um, delivery apps or have the student order through the delivery apps. They will not be able to eat that until after school. Um, and then other reminders just about cameras, cell phones, bathrooms, you know, make sure that you're talking with your students about, um, you know, how to behave and, you know, just being really careful with those things. I think it's Mr. Rich. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the new things uh, for the school year, but I'm going to stress again, we, we have a, a new traffic pattern that will be implemented at the start of the school year. We're, we're landlocked in the sense that we can't change many of the road infrastructures that lead to the school and then onto campus. So we're doing the best we can uh, with this change to get as much traffic quickly onto campus as possible. Um, uh, increasing the drop-off span to try to get cars off campus quickly in the mornings. Um, there is no perfect solution. We, we, we're going to experience delays, I'm sure, even with the best of intentions and, and hard work. So parents, the, the advice I would give is try to get here early um, or, or have students ride the bus so they can be dropped off uh, in the bus loop. Um, let's get on to the Evolve uh, screening technology. Uh, these are magnetometers that... Um, um, detect, um, theoretically detect uh, weapons that, that, that may be brought into a building or an athletic event. The Evolve system has been used extensively um, across professional sports venues, um, other, other buildings and, and organizations, um, obviously the new to Prince William County. Um, students will um, be able to see the Evolve systems at the start of the school year. We will go live a couple of weeks into the school year um, we only have four doors, however, that students will be able to enter um, to be scanned as they enter the building. That will be doors one and six, the main entrance and the uh, uh, entrance over by the bus loop, uh, mostly for bus uh, riders, and then doors 13, 33 for student drivers and uh, parent drop-off in the morning. All students must go through the system, and uh, we'll provide students with a little bit more guidance and information before we go live in September. Students will not be able to enter the building before 7 a.m. However, these systems will start to be staffed and manned at uh, 7 a.m. So we'll open the doors uh, from the start of the school year starting at 7. So we don't want students to be getting here at 6.30, 6.45. Um, we will be um, um, required in essence to ask students to wait outside until the Evolve systems are up and running. And then we'll be able to start letting students in. Students walk through the sensors. Um, they don't have to um, do anything special. They can walk through as they would normally walk through a, 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 any door as they arrived in the building. The sensors will detect um, certain signatures that, that uh, they're programmed to detect. And uh, if a student is alerted, uh, the system gives a, a 3D representation of a box around where the item may be, either in a student's bag or on their person. Um, student will be asked to, to show what it could be and then go back through the system again just to show that um, 
we've um, we've addressed any concerns that the system may have flagged. Um, laptops, students will be asked to carry and then pass around the census. And uh, we've sent out a list through the school division of things that may be sensitive, like umbrella, umbrellas, metal glasses, cases, uh, metal three ring binders that, that could set off the census. And um, I've asked students to, to consider other um, alternates to, to metal versions of those, uh, those items. Um, moving on from there, um, we have information about staying connected with the school. Um, the, the best place to find information about our school, frankly, is through our school website. The URL is there. Um, student and parent view, obviously, for grades and attendance are the best places to go. We will continue to send out Cardinal Connections, either bi-weekly or weekly. We may try to thin down the volume, but send them out more frequently. Um, we do have social media accounts through Twitter or X and Facebook. Um, we use those accounts modestly, but we try to share bits of good news and uh, some must have information when, uh, when necessary. And then obviously the principal and county communication tools um, will we'll get, get out to users who've provided email addresses, cell phone numbers, et cetera. Okay, here's some good to know information. Um, Generally speaking, we assign um, duties or responsibilities amongst our administrative staff and our counselors by alphabet. So each of our assistant principal supervisors are a fifth of the alphabet. Um, however, they work with four administrative assistants. So the admin assistants, Ms. Fifley, Washington, Henson, and Gartrell, um, each have a quarter of the alphabet. Um, generally speaking, they're the people that you would first uh, reach if you were to call the school. Um, otherwise, we, we strongly encourage parents to reach out to our teachers. Our teachers are usually the first protocol when it comes to having questions about classes, grades, um, curriculum. Um, our school counselors then are a great resource for a lot of other information. Um, and our counselors, again, are assigned students by alphabet. Ms. Pomfret will uh, talk about that breakdown a little bit further down the line. Okay, we're going to go through some of our special program uh, services, and uh, Mrs. Yearwood's going to talk first about English learner services. So on the screen, you see our department members, and they're the teachers who are going to be supporting. They're going to have a caseload, um, but it's also a really important person there is our parent liaison, who is new this year, Ms. Noah Mihara, and she's going to be a great point of contact for helping any, any parent who re requires assistance, especially in any language. Um, but also connecting with teachers and making sure that there are supports for our students. Um, so all of those people on the screen are parent, people who can you can reach out to for support um, for English learner services. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Barton for special education. Thank you. Um, so our, our students um, who receive special education, um, similar to, to their experience in, in any other school system, um, they will get a, a, a special education a special education case manager. Um, case managers will reach out to parents and 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 students um, prior to the first day of school. Um, as as one of our systems, um, any student who um, has an IEP, their their all of their teachers will be provided the pertinent information for accommodations and things like that again, prior to the, the beginning of, of school, prior to that first day, um, our case managers will reach out and schedule IEP meetings um, and, and eligibility meetings as they come due. Uh, that being said, as a parent, you always have the, the right and we encourage you to, to reach out to, to us as a school if, if you have specific concerns and um, we can always come to the table and, and discuss those whether it be through an IEP meeting or, or some other meeting, really just to make sure that, that your students' needs are being met and, and we can provide the best uh, education for, for each of our students. Hi folks, uh, it's Dr. Scott, uh, Robert Scott here, just with a few quick notes on kind of two general approaches that we had for uh, gifted education programming. Uh, the basic framework for services includes options for students who are interested in kind of a, a more creative or exploratory approach 
culminating in our gifted education and multidisciplinary seminars. That's the GEMS classes in uh, 11th and 12th grade. They're half, half credit courses, but there's more creativity and exploration um, for students in those, in those classes. If you're interested in a more challenging kind of structured approach, we have the AP seminar and AP research options as part of the, the capstone program, traditional, uh, non-traditional AP classes that result in, in uh, weighted credit and, and college credit. Either way, for rising ninth graders, uh, you'll meet with the gifted education teachers in the first month or so of school, and we'll get you scheduled into our initial seminars. Your teachers and, and counselors can work with you from, from there. And, and if you're uncertain about enrolling in honors or advanced placement classes, absolutely uh, give it a try. AP World History, AP Seminar, they're outstanding entry-level cl AP classes designed for students interested in taking on that, that additional challenge. And, and, and don't worry too much about your first AP score. Having the experience is more, is more important and more valuable than, than getting a three. And, and as Mr. Beach said, keep in mind that you know, just in year two at Gainesville, we administered almost 1,100 assessments with a nearly 70% success rate, and many of those students were enrolled in their first AP class. So come find me, see your gifted education teacher, see your counselor, excuse me, if you have questions, and, and um, you'll be glad you did. Uh, next slide is um, just a little bit of background about our Pathways to Global Citizenship program. Um, and this, for any student, uh, I'm hoping that you'll consider the array of pathways that we have available through the program. Uh, we, we don't have time to go through all of them now, but if you, if you grab this QR code, you can scroll through the, the 14 options that we, that we have available. Granted, they're, they're not all right for you, but give them some thought. Think about biomed or world languages, global ecology, maybe even engineering. There's, there's something in there for everyone. Mr. Beach uh, worked with uh, all of us to, to try to come up with pathways that would give every Gainesville student the opportunity to have a group of themed courses that would lead to a, a, a capstone class or an experience that would challenge and prepare you for whatever path you choose after graduation. And please keep in mind though, that the, the pathways sketched in this QR code, they're, they're not a checklist. They're just suggestions, um, guidelines for, for each of the pathways. Talk to your teachers, talk to your parents, then visit with your counselor. You, you don't have to choose a pathway, but now's the time to consider them and maybe help us get you enrolled in whichever one is, is right for you. Or text me anytime with, uh, with questions. I'm, I'm happy to help. Thanks. Uh, we are really excited to um, have our new student orientation next week. So if your student is new to Gainesville High School, um, we will have our new student orientation next Thursday from 745 to 1130 here at Gainesville High School. Um, at this event, it is a great way for your student to kind of get to know the school. They'll have a chance to walk through their schedules, meet their teachers. We're also going to have an activities fair where students can learn about the clubs, sports, other fun activities that they can get involved in here at school. Um, they'll also have the opportunity to meet their administrators and their counselors and some student leaders to get their experience at Gainesville High School. Uh, so this is a really great event. If you do have a new student and you would like to RSVP for the event for planning purposes, um, please use the QR code here on the screen. Um, there will be express bus stops provided. We will send an email out as soon as we have those that information, um, and we will post it on our webpage as well. Um, and for parents, there will be an optional parent session with Mr. Beach from 9 to 9.45 in the auditorium if they have any questions that they would like answered as well. So we hope that you can come on out if you're um, a new student to Gainesville High School. Hello everyone, I'm here to talk about some athletics and activity news. As some of you or most of you know, our fall sports have gotten off to a great start. Cross country, football, volleyball, golf have all started. For any activity or athletic news, we uh, invite you to go to our webpage at GainesvilleCardinals.com. There is a list of coaches and sponsors in terms of their contact, their Prince William County email addresses, the schedules for the upcoming fall sports are there as well. 
Um, most of our teams are a week or two away. Golf team has already started, but most of our teams are a week or two away from early matches and or scrimmages and games. There's also some information there regarding clubs, organizations, and the all important VHSL physical form and concussion training. As some of you or most of you should know, every athlete uh, that uh, tries out or comes out for a sport has to have a BHSL physical on file and has to go through the proper concussion training. Uh, there's information, detailed information on that athletic page at GainesvilleCardinals.com if you need more information about that. Here's a list of some of our home events to kick off the school year. Um, we are, as Mr. Beach said earlier, not only are we progressing in our student enrollment, but we're progressing on the athletic fields and in our activities as well. Our first home volleyball game will be on the 21st of August. Uh, a new change to our volleyball uh, contest this year is that we will have the freshman and JV playing simultaneously. So both those games here at Gainesville will start at 545, and that'll be followed by our uh, varsity team at 7 o'clock p.m. Field hockey gets started against Battlefield, JV at 530, varsity at 7 p.m. That is on the 22nd. As Mr. Beach alluded to earlier, our golf team has gotten off to a great start. They have multiple contests to include one on the 22nd at the Prince William Golf Course at 5 p.m. A varsity football team starts off their season on the 25th of August versus Potomac at seven o'clock p.m. The freshman football team will start their season against Paul the Six at 5.30. And then our JV football team will also open on that same night um, versus Garfield at seven o'clock p.m. We appreciate the support and coming out and supporting our student athletes. Hello again, my name is Megan Pomford. I'm the Director of Counseling. Um, so we have a, a large student support team to offer our community, um, including our attendance officer, our New Horizons counselor, and various other supports, including school counselor, school nurse, school psychologist, and school social workers. So you have lots of ways that you can reach out for help for your student. Um, due to the growth of our school, we have added a new school counselor this year. We are excited to welcome Ms. Myers. This has um, changed the caseloads of our counselors and what you can see here um, on the slide and will be updated on the website soon. Students will be able to make appointments with their counselors through um, a function called bookings through Office 365. This will be posted very soon on Canvas and the Gainesville website so kids can make appointments directly with their school counselors um, and parents, can con parents and families can contact counselors um, through email um, or they're welcome to make phone calls. The services that the counseling centers will offer includes college and career support. We do have Ms. Harris, our college and career counselor, who's developing some pretty strong um, college and career work, including we're doing an application workshop for students on Friday, August 10th. She'll do workshops throughout the year on various topics. School counselors also focus on academic and personal social issues, and we provide those services through classroom lessons through school-wide initiatives, through small group counseling, and through some individual counseling. However, this is not therapy. Um, this is kind of short, solution-focused um, uh, work that counselors would be doing with students. The question that we're always getting this time of year are about our students' schedules. So new students will receive first draft copies of their schedule at our orientation on August 17th. Um, all schedules will go live in parent and student view on Wednesday, August 16th. I do want you to really pay attention to that note that changes can always occur. We are leveling, we are um, working to ensure um, balanced classes throughout our schedules. So students will not get their official official schedule until first block, excuse me, second block on the very first day of school on August 21st. They will get a paper copy of that and it will also be visible in their student view. So if your student has a cell phone, if you allow them to have that, I encourage you to have student view on their cell phone so they can see their schedule. Parents, something new this year is that until you complete the new school year packet in parent view, you will not be able to really use your, you will not be able to use your parent view account. Um, so please complete that new school year packet as soon as possible so that you can see your child's schedule um, when it is unveiled on August 16th. 
Again, the, until you complete that new school year packet, you will not be able to see your student's schedule. Um, it'll take you approximately five minutes, depending on the information. Um, this is where you can update your email if you don't like the email we're using or you have a new cell phone number. This also is where you'll sign off on some permission. So again, please complete that new school year packet. That's very important. All right, um, schedule changes. So we will absolutely fix any scheduling errors that have been made. So if your student sees an error at orientation, they can email their school counselor that day. The counseling team will not be in their offices as they will be supporting the orientation event. So their best course of action is for students to email their counselor. If you see errors on the first day of school, um, you can tell your teacher and report to counseling during the block of the error. So for example, if your schedule says that you have fourth block, that you're in algebra one, but you should actually be in geometry, don't come down randomly. We want you to come down in the block of your error, and we will get you back to your counselor as soon as possible so we can fix everything. But again, come down in the error of a block of that error. Um, school counselors met one on one with every student from mid February to May 5th um, to collect uh, course requests, and those requests drive staffing, resource, and budgeting. Um, and our schedule, our school schedule, is built on student preference. Um, we are not able to honor any changes for electives um, or for other course changes at this point. Um, it, we've already had that time, um, and we're just going to move forward with our student schedules and schedule changes um, regarding teacher preferences. We are not able to honor those as well. We are very lucky at Gainesville High School to have a strong um, and talented staff, so your student will learn from some great professionals. Um, in terms of level changes that may arise, that is a process that includes the teacher, the student, the family, the administrator, and the counselor. We want to see students challenge themselves, um, and we really, we see it can take a little while for students to set in, so we're going to work with your child to ensure that they're using the supports that their teacher provides, and really including the teacher in those conversations about how their, your student can be successful in their courses. Um, immunization. So immunizations, uh, it is required by Virginia State Code that there are certain immunizations for public school enrollment. Um, there have been quite a few emails, phone calls, and school status messages that have been going out to families in regarding to noncompliance. The most, the grade that is most impacted is probably our 12th grade in terms of the new, there's a, a 12th grade requirement for meningococcal um, vaccine. So it is important that if you've received, received a message from Gainesville High School in regards to your students' immunizations, that you clear that up as soon as possible. Otherwise, those children or those students will be excluded from school on August 21st. You're gonna have to come get them and they cannot attend school until that immunization is taken care of. You can also look in parent view under the health tab and look for your child's immunization compliance. Um, you can send those immunization, that immunization information to Ms. Pamela Smith. She is our school nurse, or you can drop off a paper copy at our office at, at the school office and we can process it for you. So what if during the school year, your student needs help? So if it's a general Gainesville High School question, we ask that you use the website or the social media. Um, we're going to be working this year to build out our website time to get more information on there as well. What if it's about a class? The most important place for you to start is with your student's teacher. Um, they are really the, the best place for you to start to get support and to know what interventions could be possible for your student to get help. Um, of course, you should work with your student's team, and that includes the teacher, the counselor, the administrator, and the families are partners with that as well. If it's a personal or a social issue, you are welcome to contact your student's count school counselor, and we are able to collaborate with communi um, community resources as needed and or connect you with resources that may be available. And we all have the same goal, and for that's for us to partner together for your student to grow and to learn. A very impactful resource that all Prince William County students have access to is paper. This is a free online tutorial available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we strongly encourage our students to use paper. Um, they can, it serves um, as there's a free teachers on the other end, live teachers, and students can chat with a tutor almost like a messaging system to get support for help that they need. They can also get writing feedback on essays, college essays, resumes that they're writing. I strongly encourage our families to explore this resource. In the 23-24 school year, we will continue to use Canvas and Student View. There are links for both of these uh, resources on the Gainesville High School website. 
Um, if your student needs help, there have, I've already heard from a couple of families that passwords have expired over the summer. Um, you can utilize that link there to go ahead and reset your student's password. Um, and that uh, that password reset applies to all three six, Office 365 accounts and student views, and that's how they access Canvas and Zoom, though we're not really using Zoom that much anymore. If you do need support, you are welcome to reach out to Mr. Uh, Daniel Nemero, who is our um, ITC. Parent view um, is really the best way for parents to keep an eye on their students' grades and their progress. But as I mentioned before, you've got to complete that new school year packet. Otherwise, the functionality of Parent View will not be um, will not work for you until this is done. So this packet completion is necessary. And this is where you can edit your contact information. You can check grades. You can enter full day attendance absences if your child's going to be out. You can also monitor health information and graduation requirements. Um, parent View. There is a way for you to communicate during Parent View, but we really ask for you to use your uh, teacher's email. If you need help accessing Parent View, um, please feel free to scan this QR code. Our school registrar, Ms. Nugent, will be able to respond to you and support. Say, for example, um, if you have two Parent View accounts and you need to consolidate it to one, or maybe you have forgotten the password for your Parent View. Um, this last little bit here for me, then I'm going to hand it off to Mr. Beach. Um, we are very excited to have our class of 2024 get started with us. Um, we have our first application workshop. It's um, August 10th at 1130 and information has been posted. Um, there's emails that have been sent out to the class of 24. It's been posted on, on the, Car the Counseling Cardinals Instagram page as well as the Facebook page for Gainesville High School. Students will meet one-on-one um, -on -one with their school counselors in a senior interview um, that will correspond with the senior lesson. And that'll start about mid-September to talk about their plan, review graduation requirements, um, and figure out what the next steps will be as they plan for life after Gainesville. We encourage our senior families to save the date for September 14th. We will be hosting a senior information night where we will have information tables and information sessions for families as they navigate a very exciting, but also a very overwhelming time as well. And a graduation window, as soon as we know um, our graduation date, I promise we will get that information to you all. We anticipate late May to early June. We ask that you not book trips around that time as we don't exactly know when graduation will be. We want your student to be here for the ceremony and to finish up their senior year. So really reserve that time um, and not, you know, have your children here at least until June 7th in, in case, you know, graduation is later in the, in the season. But we will get that information out to you all as soon as we can. And I'm going to hand it back to Mr. Beach. All right, uh, last slide, uh, some of the important dates uh, that are coming up, starting with our new student orientation on Thursday, and obviously the first day of school, the Monday after that. Uh, back to school night is August 30th, uh, starting at 6 p.m. The rest of the dates you can see. Uh, we recognize that this was a lot of information this evening. Um, it's a little bit of a catch-all, and we, we figured if we recorded the, the webinar, um, you could watch it at your leisure. So if you got through all of that information, uh, well done. Thanks for sticking with us. Um, all of this information will be available again, typically through another medium. So we may push this same information out through our Cardinal Connections. It'll be on our website. We'll share pieces of it through Back to School Night. Um, so we try to get everything out uh, ahead of time, and then we can revisit it. So we'll communicate two or three different ways for the important stuff through the year. One last thing I'm going to uh, share with you, and this is truly the last slide, and that's the QR code. Again, as uh, parents, we we want our families to, to be able to connect with the school and be involved with the things that, that are going on with the school. So if you have an interest in being uh, more deeply connected and partnering with us, be beyond the day-to-day -day, um, education of your child, scan the QR code, let us know what your interests are, and we'll try to connect you with the right people in, in the school and the community to uh, to be involved uh, throughout the school year. That's it for our back to school webinar. Hopefully some of this was inf useful information for you. And um, we're looking forward to seeing you during the uh, the upcoming 22, 23, sorry, 23, 24 uh, academic year. Thanks for your time.